as much advice as my mom did, he was very supportive in the sense that he said, um, whatever happens, I'm here to support you in your decision. My dad left most decision making up to me. He saw himself as the breadwinner and provider for us. I never knew him to have fewer than three jobs at any one time. So that was his main focus and activity. Rightly so, he had nine people to feed and clothe and house. I don't know how he did it, actually. Absolutely, yes, sir. Uh, in the clip on Eyes on the Prize, you, they have a press conference, and I think it's you that mentioned about communists like to take advantage of situations. Oh, right, that was a scripted affair. We all read that stuff. You were fed that. I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was kind of fun. We didn't mind doing it at the time. Of course, we were fairly naive, too. But you were told what to say. We were told what to say. And, you know, everybody was down on communists. Exactly. Oh, the Red Scare, let's get rid of them. Root the communists out. Right. I didn't even know what a commie was. <laughs> uh, do you have any singular moment or event that hurt you the most? I have no singular moment that, that hurt me the most that I can recall. Lots of them that hurt a lot. I think the thing that hurt me the most was not the physical damage, but the the real psychological stuff. Now, I couldn't figure out how could these folk with such ease do unto us the things they did. That was hard to figure out. Yes. Um, because you got your degree in psychology because of this experience and because and because you wanted to explain like why people would do that to you? It's quite possible, but I don't know. Interesting question. Out of the nine of us, who had it the worst? Any clues? Yeah, it's hard to say. I wouldn't. I, I don't think you could even imagine that. Yeah. So we all had it bad. <laughs> it was bad. Is this base still alive? No. She died a few years ago. I think she died in 1990. Yeah, I'm pretty much sure that was the name. Oh, good question. If my brothers and sisters were involved and they got kicked on what I had fought, I'd have to say probably, yeah. It's probably a good thing they weren't. Because huh. I'd have to abandon nonviolence. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, think about it. Because right now, I don't fight generally, but if you pick on my kids, or especially my grandkids, I'll take you out. <laughs> <laughs>
we need to talk about the essence of what was happening, the mindsets, the way people were thinking, how programs and policies and procedures were developed and how those impact us today. For instance, in this year, 2009, we are only 55 years removed from the Supreme Court decision in 1954. Prior to 1954, it was deemed constitutional to discriminate in this country. Since 1954, legally, things changed, nothing else. Psychologically, philosophically, culturally, ideologically, stuff remained intact. Kids need to know this. That helps them understand what's going on today. It helps them to give you an example. I walked into the Little Rock 